new growth theories, endogenous growth models. See, in solo swan model, what is it that we have seen? That the growth process is determined by the technological progress and the growth in the technology is given to you from outside, exogenously. In new growth theories, it is assumed that technological progress is not something which is happening outside the system. It is happening within the system, right? And what is it that is driving technological progress? Innovation, entrepreneurship, knowledge, right? So all of that is also going to drive the growth process. So we'll write a few points and it will be more clear to you. Please write. <clears throat> it emphasizes the importance of entrepreneurship. The importance <clears throat> of entrepreneurship <clears throat> knowledge innovation technology and it challenges the view that the growth is exogenous so in the new classical models uh, like for example in solo etc that is what you have that is what you have seen ki jo technological progress hai wo outside hai wo given hai kaise ho rahi technological progress jaise wo a se grow kar raha hai wo given tha tumhare ko yahan pe aisa nahi hai Challenging the view that both growth process is exogenous. process is exogenous is determined by external forces determined by external force ye to pehli baat hai dusri baat hai ke jo ग्रोथ हो रहा है दैट ग्रोथ इज कमिंग ड्यू टू नॉलेज एंड नॉलेज इज इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न्स जैसे और तरह की कैपिटल है दैट इज सब्जेक्ट टू डिमिनिशिंग रिटर्न्स बट नॉलेज इज इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न्स आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा नॉलेज लेते जाएंगे और उस नॉलेज से आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्रोड्यूस करते चले जाएंगे राइट एट एन इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न दैट इज वॉट इट इज सो इफ the ability of an economy to grow is dependent upon knowledge and knowledge is subject to increasing returns so economy can have boundless growth that's an that's the point so please write it emphasizes that economic growth results from the increasing returns associated <clears throat> with new knowledge the ability to grow
autonomy by increasing knowledge knowledge rather than labor or capital see economy can also grow if you have more labor and more capital right but don't you think it is better in case if that labor could be more knowledgeable um, it will have such a human capital that we can increase the growth process boundless right uh, without bounds right rather than because labor capital ko increase karne ka ek bound hai na i mean it cannot be increased uh, uh, without certain limit but knowledge doesn't have a bond i mean you can keep on increasing your knowledge right and you will have more and more output because of that rather than labor or capital creates opportunities for nearly <clears throat> boundless growth for nearly boundless growth right so uh it is not seeing uh, when i say it i mean uh, new growth uh, theories they are not seeing uh, technology which is happening outside the system which is happening uh, which is not the part of the economic activity it is internalizing the technology it is viewing technology as the as something which is internal to the system it views technological progress as a part as a part of economic activity or in other words it internalizes <clears throat> technology or in other words it internalizes the technology right so uh, physical capital they are they are subject to diminishing returns but if you look at knowledge they are not subject to diminishing returns that is subject to increasing returns right and in new growth theories these increasing returns are going to drive the growth process right so new growth theory holds holds that <clears throat> unlike physical capital knowledge and technology which is driven by knowledge knowledge and technology
are characterized by increasing returns. And basically these increasing returns, they are driving the growth process in new growth theories. And these increasing returns drive the growth process. Mm -hmm. Now, new classical uh, growth theory, I mean, if you look at solo swan model, a new classical growth model, it is assuming that the technological progress is given to you from outside. It is exogenously given. This is not what new, new growth theories are assuming. No. Uh, so they say that with knowledge, I mean, with innovations, you can have increasing returns. And how those innovations are going to take form, those innovations will be seen in new products. They will be seen in new processes. They will be seen in new markets. Huh? And those innovations are going to bring about increasing returns in the economy and hence economy is going to grow. Neoclassical growth theory. Assume the rate of technological progress as exogenously given. Right. While endogenous growth theory maintains that technological progress right, takes place through innovations and innovations will be seen in what? It will be seen in new products. It will be seen in new processes. It will be seen in new markets. Please. Two innovations. In the form of new products. new processes new markets
making technological progress endogenous to the system. Firms are going to learn from their experience. <clears throat> they will understand about how to innovate, what to innovate from their own experience also. And supposedly my firm is going to learn some experience, then my experience is going to, is my experience in the form of my knowledge is going to spill over to the another firm. That firm is also going to learn from me. Experience of that firm is going to spill over to the another firm also. And this process will keep on happening. So the knowledge, you cannot just contain knowledge. I mean, it is going to spread out. It is going to, that is a spillover effect. And because that is going to be spilled over through the entire macroeconomic activity, the growth is going to go very high, right? That's an idea here. The firms may learn from experience. How to produce efficiently. Then this spread of knowledge will spill over will spill over to other forms. Right. But, I mean, whether other firms are going to take uh, uh, the knowledge from me, that is also dependent upon their own human capital. Are they knowledgeable? Right. So all of that is going to be dependent upon human capital and the, in the, in the endogenous growth theory is going to be through the investment in the human capital. And that's what we're going to see in the models. But that again... is dependent is dependent upon the human capital so the idea is that uh, in case of endogenous growth theories these uh, this growth process is going to be subject to increase in returns. It is going to be determined by uh, knowledge. Here, the spillover effects will be much more important. So, and this is in uh, this is uh, in contrast to the neoclassical growth theory, which takes technological progresses given from outside, right? So that is an idea. And uh, in the next recording, I'll talk about one of the model of endogenous growth theory. Uh, so uh, maybe this was of some use to you. Right. Uh, so please, thank you very much. And in case if you can just summarize one or two points, uh, what you learned from this recording. So I'll be very happy. Thank you. Vita.